If I'm gonna do something, I'm all in. When I do a school project, it was done perfect. When I need something done, I write a paper, it's done perfect. When it comes to not eating, I did it perfect. Hmm. Eating disorders are a serious condition affecting millions of teens and young adults across the country. And it's not just girls and women suffering from these disorders. Overcoming them has been a very personal journey for former MLB player Mike Marjama. And this week is National Eating Disorders Week. The movement promotes body and body po positivity and acceptance. And Mike Marjama is here right now. And Mike, you actually retired from baseball to take a job with the National Eating Disorder Association, right? Yes. Yeah, so um, in July, um, I ended up retiring from uh, Major League Baseball. Um, I guess technically I was in the minor leagues in AAA, so I can't really say I was uh, playing at the time. But um, I ended up retiring and, and started becoming an advocate and a, a voice for uh, the millions of people that are suffering from eating disorders. and. Uh, uh, really mental health in general, um, you know, the depressions, anxieties, um, oftentimes coexisting uh, conditions that many people are facing right now. And you said in that video, very powerful mm -hmm. to see that when you wrote a paper, you wrote it perfectly. And when it came to not eating, you did that perfectly. And this was something that started in your teens with you. Yeah, even when we think back, it was almost childhood. Uh, mm -hmm. So for me, it's the personality traits. Um, not everyone that's a perfectionist or maybe obsessive is is going to develop an eating disorder or, or anything like that. Um, but they are definitely some warning signs. And so those are some of the things that we look for in people. And, and for me, it was that way. And you mix that personality. Um, it became my best friend. That's what allowed me to uh, kind of grind and, and work hard and become a Major League Baseball player. But that's also some of the things that ended up almost killing me. So um, some of the greatest attributes that I have or, or traits ended up being kind of my best friend and my worst enemy. How did you overcome it? How, how, how did that journey come about of getting over it? And, and how did you seek help? Uh, to be honest with you, I think with almost anything is uh, kind of radical vulnerability. So Brene Brown talks a lot about that mm -hmm. in, in a lot of her stuff, and she's fabulous. And we talk about, you know, you recently discussed the toxic max masculinity, and mm -hmm. we started talking about that in men, and it's so hard to show. So uh, for me, you know, really developing was almost like it in school. So if you thought about like the best time of the school day was always recess. And it was like you played tag. And you better believe I was gonna tag the cutest girl in that schoolyard, right? And in turn, she was gonna tag me. And it just never happened. And then I started getting in. I wasn't really getting attention. I didn't really fit in. So I was, well, how do I look like the guy on the Abercrombie bag that everyone's carrying around at like my time in junior high school? And they said, mm -hmm. well, if you work out a ton, uh, mm -hmm. you get big and strong. And if you don't eat anything, you won't get fat. So that was just the solution. And as we know with people is we see um, these extreme diets and we see um, all this information out there, but we don't really know what's true and really what is valid and what's backed. Um, and so for me, it was kind of finding that information and then um, kind of incorporating what I learned in therapy, seeking the professional help and incorporating that on my field of play, which ended up becoming sports psychology. And you were so young when, when, this, when this kind of started in your life. What should parents, if they're watching, what should they be looking out for with their children? So you want to definitely be looking out for um, any of the warning signs that you can find on any of the websites. Mm -hmm. So uh, the National Eating Disorder Association has one. The Alliance for Eating Disorder Awareness here in Florida has one. Mm -hmm. um, Center for Discovery, Eating, Re Eating Recovery Center. There's so many different um, uh, uh, treatment centers, nonprofits that give you support things. Uh, some of the most common things you can find are restricted behaviors. Mm -hmm. So if you see restricted behaviors, we normally associate with anorexia. Um, binge eating, if we find uh, binge eating is actually very, very common. And that's, you'll see a lot of rappers. And so we see that a lot with, um, you'll see almost like a binge cycle where people restrict. So we, what we talk about in mainstream culture now would be, I'm going to eat good during the week and then the weekend comes and I'm just going to have a I'm just going to have a cheat day or something. Right. And you end up being so malnourished through the week, you go to have mm -hmm. that piece of pizza and you're like, okay, I'll have go one. Right. And then all of a sudden you have two and then three right. and then four. Uh -huh. And then you go through, and then you feel so guilty. And then the next week you're like, man, I'm just, I got to make up for it. So then yeah, you restrict. Yeah. And so we start falling into this cycle here. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people can relate to what that's like now. Talk about the diet culture that we're in. Because mm -hmm. it's so, I mean, there's so many diets. And that's, that seems to be like all we talk about is like this one or that yeah. one is better for us. And then we have social media, the filters mm. and the face tuning and the no, body yes. tuning. Yeah, hashtag fitspo. And it's fits, a lot though. of pressure, especially yeah. for a younger person mm -hmm. who maybe, you know, hasn't found that self-confidence yeah, yet. Yeah, I think so when we look at the dietary supplement industry's projected to be around 20 or 220 billion dollars 
uh, $220 billion industry by 2020. So we're looking at an at a industry that is completely unregulated by the FDA. Wow. So when you look at like the fit teas, like mm -hmm. we know everybody's selling a fit tea on Instagram or everyone's selling a protein powder or something mm -hmm. on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Normally the number one ingredient on a fit tea is a diuretic or a laxative. Mm -hmm. it, no one, you know, you don't look at it, you don't know, and it'll be some new name. And so, uh, you know, we have a lot of people, especially men, turning to either steroid abuse mm -hmm. or supplementation to try mm -hmm. to achieve a certain look. Most guys that go to the gym aren't going there to use supplements to bench press more weight. It's a form of body dysmorphia mm -hmm. or a body dissatisfaction. Mm -hmm. So we as men need to kind of do the same thing as reevaluate, like what are our habits? Are they healthy or are they not? And I think um, I always use, I talk with a lot of young kids, or, are you choosing the Queen Elsa that is freezing everything? Or are you cho choosing to be Queen Elsa that is kind of unfreezing everything, becoming the hero? Mm -hmm. And so at what point are we choosing the healthy route instead mm -hmm. of the unhealthy route? Mm -hmm. So someone sitting at home mm -hmm. who maybe thinks they might have an issue with this or knows someone, what are some resources locally they could reach out for? So locally, the Alliance for Eating Disorder mm -hmm. Awareness, uh, we just had a few walks um, this weekend. We did one in Boca and then we did one in Tampa and they were great. And what they're doing is they're doing these fundraising walks and then they're leaving peer support groups in the certain areas. That's so Orlando right. has some here. Um, the walks help fundraise and fund those treatment groups, um, and it's clinician-led. Um, there's Jacksonville, Orlando here, uh, Tampa, Boca, so they're all around. Um, you can all uh, go to the National Eating Disorder Association, Project Heal, um, Center for Discovery, uh, Eating Recovery Center. There's so many treatment centers and nonprofits actually here in Florida. Um, so if you are struggling, if you feel like these are, are things that you need, uh, don't be afraid to ask for help because you aren't alone. We have the 30 million uh, Americans dealing with that and 10 million being men. But I know those numbers are off because I get men that send me direct messages all the mm -hmm. time, men and women that say, I've struggled for this for 20 or 30 or 40 years and I've never been able to reach out. Wow. So I think it's going to show that even men and women, we're so much more similar than we are different. Mm -hmm. And we all have problems. And I think that it's okay to have them um, and it's okay to ask for help because I promise you, you aren't alone. Yeah, I mean, one in four struggling yeah. estimated to be a man. Out of the people struggling. So. Yes, yes. So we all have them. We all have these problems, like I said. Yeah. And, and for me, it's uh, hoping to inspire people to reach out for the help that they need because uh, you deserve it. And it's something that, you know, I'd never wish anybody to have to go through. Yeah. Focus on a lot of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank Focus you. on the strength, not the weakness. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely.